All right, good morning. Um, I want to start off by saying, you know, please pray for this family. Uh, this is a horrific situation. This family, these adult children, everybody involved, you know, I could just imagine it was a normal Friday evening in their house and then just escalate it with the domestic violence. So please pray for them right now um, as they're struggling with their mother um, fighting for her life. And so it began Friday evening around 7.30. The adult children were inside the house. Their mother and the father were arguing. The mother and father took the argument into the bedroom. They continued arguing in there. Um, at some point, the adult daughter hears gunshots. The mother comes out of the room. She's bleeding. She's screaming, call police, get out of the house, call police, get out of the house. As the daughter's calling, she hears two more gunshots from within the room. The adult male was inside the room by himself. She believed her self-inflicted shots. She calls 911. The Pasco Sheriff's Office arrives on scene. The deputies did a heroic job getting in there, getting the woman outside the house, the adult children outside the house to safety. They immediately started doing rendering aid to the adult mother who was shot. During that time, as fire rescue, they were able to get her to fire rescue, the police, the, um, daughter had conveyed to the deputies that she had heard the gunshot she had actually looked inside the room at one point and she believed she had seen the adult male laying on the bed deputies kept trying to call into the house to have him come outside um, at one point we actually were sending robotics in the robotics saw the adult male walking around for the deputy safety and for everybody's safety involved you know we weren't sure if this gentleman he had already shot his wife or the partner he had for over 20 years. We also recognized that, you know, was this possibly an ambush that he was going to do for law enforcement? So we were able to call up Hillsborough County. We thanked the robotics team. They worked with our robotics team. We saw him walking around the house. Uh, we notified our SWAT team. SWAT got activated at the time also. But as we were trying, trying to negotiate, trying to get him to talk to us, nothing was being done. He wasn't doing anything. So because of the action circumstances, we wanted to make sure you know, he was alive, what was going on. We had the warrant for his arrest. We entered the house. Um, he was inside a food pantry. He still would not listen and obey orders. He would not come out of there. He would not peacefully exit. We had one of our SWAT canine units in there. The SWAT canine took lead. Uh, we're able to pull him out of there and get him into custody. But this could have been anywhere in Pasco County. This could have been any story within the county, but it goes back to the point, point that domestic violence is a scourge in our community, in Tampa Bay, throughout every community. So we're asking anybody who's in a situation that, you know, there's arguing, consistent arguing going on, God forbid there's abuse going on, you know, immediately call 911. The Sheriff's Office will respond, but we want to and we will connect you to Sunrise Domestic Violence Shelter. But before such incidents do occur, we ask you to be proactive in these type of situations and remove yourself, call Sunrise, because this situation escalated to the level now. We have one woman that we pray makes it through. She's in critical condition. Last we heard she was still in surgery. You know, we have one in custody who will be charged with attempted homicide. We have two adult children that are grieving. We have a family that they're still reaching out to, telling them what's going on. And, trying to get them to you know, hear the story because we don't want them hurt being told through the news. We'd rather the family be able to tell them directly. But it also goes back to the point of the amount of resources that were utilized, the professionals of this Pasco Sheriff's Office working with Hillsborough County, you know, from our hostage negotiation team, trying to talk to him, trying to get inter interact with him, but he wouldn't. Our robotics team, trying to go in there to make sure deputies can safely enter that house. You know, the SWAT team what they did, the canine units, but even the first deputies on scene, going in there, pulling her out, rendering aid, not knowing what they were charging into, but knowing they were going to save somebody's life. But ultimately, you know, it goes to God and we ask for his prayers to please bless this woman. Hopefully she will make it through. She's in critical condition, but also to look over those children because they have a long life ahead of them and they have this tragic situation that's gonna be on their hearts and we pray that their hearts are not hardened by it but that God's love will somehow heal them. So with that being said, any questions? What type of injuries did the wife sustain? So uh, at least we believe two gunshot wounds, critical condition. She lost a lot of blood, rushed to the hospital. Um, you know, 
we weren't sure at what point if she was going to make it or not. So right now her condition is still listed as very critical and she's going through medical surgery right now, but we're not sure if she's going to make it through this situation or not. But yeah, she was bravely, bravely injured as, as deputies got on scene. And this is what we train for. We train to be, you know, fire rescue can't go into those situations because they're not armed. They don't have Kevlar vests like we do. And so we have to render aid immediately and then get her off the fire rescue in a safe location. Are you able to share the relationship between all the four adults who are inside the home? So the, I, I say husband and wife, the common law, they've been, they've been together for 20 years, not technically married, but together for over 20 years. They share one child, one child uh, together. And they also have, she had an adult daughter, but the family had been so tight together. It, it was a, you know, it, it was a connected family, but it was one of the things they did call him stepdad. And, you know, but they did have one together, but the two were adult children. Are you familiar with them or the residents? No, uh, looking at the history of the house, there wasn't much there. Uh, a 911 hang up, um, two medical calls, not related to the sheriff's office. So no history there. And this is the one thing, you know, I, I know when we talk about, we come out here and these, unfortunately we have too many these domestic violence situations and we say, oh, there's a history going on here. There was no history recorded with the Pasco Sheriff's Office but we don't know what kind of history actually went on inside the house. And that's the thing, there's a lot of people right now that are watching this that they are in a domestic violence situation. They are in a domestic situation, maybe mentally, physically, you know, mentally. And so we want those people to seek help now. Seek help because we don't want to have to go to a house for like these type of situations. We want somebody to go to Sunrise now, reach out to them because if we could prevent situations like this, it's going to go much further and we will do everything we can to help those people get out of that situation because as we've seen tonight, it can escalate to violence in critical situations very quickly. Can you say what type of gun and did he have any more guns in the house? Uh, it was a handgun, but I don't know. We're, we're looking right now for anything else. Are you able to share identities of the suspect or the victim? No, we can't identify at this time only because we want to make sure all the families notified. And the same point is we want to go back to the fact that, you know, tomorrow we will be able to share, but we want right now family, because there are, there are still families not notified yet. We want to make sure they're notified before, you know, we put it out there publicly. But this is a, I go back to the other point too. This is a large county. It's an extremely large county. Our resources were, you know, so many resources were on this call. There was a lot of calls that were waiting tonight too. And, you know, I can imagine there was other domestic calls that we were waiting to get to and those people were waiting for us. And it just shows that the complexity of what we dealt with, the professionalism of what we're dealing with. But the other side of it is, this is a very large county. Our population is growing tremendously and the resources that are needed for this type of situations that are resolved, hopefully peacefully, you know, are being taken from other parts of the county. But I can imagine, I looked at one point, the call screen was loaded up with calls for service. There were people waiting for us. and. That's one thing that breaks our hearts is that we want to be there, we want to help them, but we just don't have those resources to be able to go everywhere where they're needed. Does this suspect have a criminal history? No, we didn't see anything in his, at this point. We're still digging through, but there was nothing that popped up to us right now. The history, and it, it goes back to it. There's so many people that commit domestic violence all the time and they have no criminal history. Uh, there's no background. There's people that, you know, live their lives and. There's women that are in these violent situations and I get it, they, they may feel embarrassed for it, but I say don't be embarrassed because there's so many people out there that you know get into, the, into these type of horrific situations. Please, I go back to it, don't be embarrassed by it. Get yourself out of it because if it's not only just for yourself, if you have children in the house with you, do it for those children. It's, a, it's only a blessing by God those two children in the house didn't get shot themselves. Who knows if somebody that's it. If somebody's in a homicidal thought strain of mind, who knows had that you know he shot his partner, his you know spouse of 20 years, but at the same time, what would have made him not turn his gun on the two adult children too? If you're in that type of frame of mind, you're not rationally thinking and you do irrational things. Mm -hmm. Is so. there a history of domestic violence in their relationship? Not, not I, I mean, all we're told is arguing. At the same time, you know, there, there could be more that we're not being told at this point, but all we know right now is that they argue a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, please pray for that family this time. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.